Now I have a, let's see, we'll make my pen here. So this is, you know, one of these gel pens. And I think this describes why erectile dysfunction is so common when we correlate it with heart disease. And if we look at the tip of the pen, and I know it's hard to see, and that's sort of the purpose, the tip of the pen is about the size of the artery that gives blood supply to the penis. Now, if we look at the back of the pen, that's about the size of a coronary artery, a, a, one of the blood vessels that gives blood to the heart. So you can imagine why we would see erectile dysfunction five to 10 years before we see any symptomatic heart disease. And it's really based on the diameter of the vessels that are supplying blood. We think of the penis as an overall barometer of health. If somebody has kidney disease or heart disease, Oftentimes you don't feel those symptoms. You don't feel the 150 over 90 blood pressure or the hemoglobin A1C of 7.5%. But a lot of men feel when their penis doesn't work. And so that is an example of the beginnings of end organ disease from damage to blood vessels and nerves. And ED and cardiovascular disease, a few people actually asked really good questions about that. ED is a substantial independent risk marker for cardiovascular disease, and it's a strong predictor of future cardiac events, just like cigarettes or a history of For those of you, oh, can you hear, can you still hear me? I'm so good. Okay. Um, for those of you who have seen me in the office before, and I harp on your blood pressure or the smoking, it's it's because those things are really important for your overall health, but also to preserve your erectile function. And in younger men, erectile dysfunction predicts a 50-fold increase in the, in the risk of future cardiac events. And it's really the same association between erectile dysfunction and diabetes. In fact, erectile dysfunction is three times more common and more severe in men with diabetes compared to those without diabetes. 